Yes, guys. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Easter Monday. Happy Bank Holiday Monday for everyone who is off work today. If you are big up to everyone here, I hope you're all doing well, guys. What a weekend of football we just had. The Premier League is back. Shane White's the best league in the world. We're going to break it down today, obviously. We're obviously a Liverpool channel, so we're going to talk a lot about Liverpool. But we're going to talk about the Arsenal City game as well, as they are our nearest and dearest rivals in the search of this Premier League trophy. Guys, before we start, don't forget to go and smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Big up to everyone who's came from Mo's show as well. Mo doing great stuff over there. So big up to everyone coming over. Don't forget to hit the likes. Let's try and get to 100 likes as quick as we can. I'd appreciate it. Got loads of chat about and help me out. Talking about all this, I've got my man K-Mac with me. K-Mac, how you doing, man? I am wonderful, mate. I hope everyone's great. Sun is shining. Ah, it's good being at the top. The, the, the sun is actually shining. Jeez. It's, uh, it, miracles do happen. Um, back on our perch. <laughs> yeah, back on our perch. <laughs> uh, morning, Wayne in the house. John in the house. Cameron. Aaron. Big up my man Aaron in the house as well. Edward as well. Big up to everyone. Chat. I hope you're all doing good, guys. I hope you had a great weekend if you celebrate Easter or not. I hope you had a great weekend in a way. So, uh, football is back, guys. Football is back. Premier League football is back. The best league in the world. Most exciting league in the world until the till the City Arsenal game, you know, put everyone to sleep. But, you know, we've got loads of chat about, loads of talk about, you know, bottom of the table, top of the table. It's the top of the table we're going to talk about. We're obviously going to talk about the Liverpool game first. Liverpool versus Brighton. You know, it's a home game for Liverpool. We do struggle against Brighton. I think that is the first time we've actually beat a Deserbys Brighton. I believe it's actually the first time we've beaten Brighton at home since we last won the Premier League, if I am correct. So omens are omens. But came okay, out. What did you, what did you think about a game? What was your uh, anticipation going into the game before kickoff? Um, I mean, uh, there was so much hype around around Brighton and Deserby. Like, no idea why. To be fair, like. We absolutely pummeled them. <laughs> like, I think they had five shots in the whole yeah. game, if I'm honest. Um, and, I mean, the chances that... I mean, the saves that Keller made were offside anyway. Now, that would have been a debate for itself. Because yeah. <laughs> then they got a corner <laughs> that they nearly scored from, which shouldn't have been a corner because it was offside in the first place. But hey-ho. Um, we had, like, 30 shots. Like, Salah had, like... Salah broke some kind of record again. 14, yeah, yeah. 14 <laughs> shots in that game, I believe. Like, another time. record by Salah. <laughs> um yeah, I, it was another it was another Liverpool start, wasn't it, where where we were a bit flaky. We um kind of passed it round at the back a bit, got overrun and then a bobbly one went in. How many bobbly ones go in against us like where they bounce off about three players? Mm. It seems to be a recurring thing, but I just, I just feel like, I just feel like we're going to create so many chances against anybody. Um, it's just, it's coming. You know what I mean? Like the, the opposition must be like, oh god, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here they come again. Yeah, it, it, the, the stats are missed these games. So Liverpool had thirty shots. Had, I'll say that again. They've had 30 shots. We had Brighton 20 had, in the box, by the way. 20 yeah. inside their box. <laughs> Brighton had nine and they had three on target. We already had eight on target. And that's the real problem there. Uh, Liverpool had 55% of the possession. Liverpool also had the most passes at 585. More passing accuracy at 89%. We committed more fouls at 20. Uh, five yellow cards, thrust three for them. No red cards. We was offside five times, then three times. We had eight corners. So, in our last five games, we've now won four and drawn one in our last five. Arsenal in their last five have drawn one and won four. And Man City in their last five have drawn two and won three. So, that's where we're looking. But team sheets yesterday. Before I get to that, big up Edward in the chat. Yes. Yeah. I, look. Yeah. The conversations yesterday. We're going to get to the Arsenal stuff. But I've got my opinions on it. And, uh, but yeah, some people, man. Some people. Um Team sheets yesterday. We saw again the midfield three of Endo McAllister and Sabozlai starting. We're going to get to Sabozlai later because I think he deserves a little bit of praise because he has been 
We haven't been giving them a lot lately, and rightly so, but I thought yesterday he played much, much better. Um, let's just talk about the man everyone's talking about right now, Alexis McAllister, again. Is he... He reminds me a lot of Shabby Alonso at times with his intelligence. Yeah. You know, Shabby, Shabby Alonso's football IQ was brilliant, was that this world. And when I look at McAllister, I think the same thing. You know, he's got that passing accuracy as well. We've got him in more of an advanced position now. And hopefully he stays there. Jürgen, if you're listening, don't go back to type. Um, so hopefully he stays there. But McAllister, yes, the man. At Absolutely running the game. I mean, I think he's got, I think he's got 15 GA this season now, and I think he's got like seven in five games GA. He's been, he's been off on another planet. I personally, I don't think there's a better midfielder in the world right now, form-wise, than him. I just don't. Um, I mean, I suppose you could throw Jude Bellingham into that, into that mix, but. He's not More really playing forward. in the same position. Yeah, More I know. Forward. So it's enough for me. Um it's just incredible. Like it's it, it's like it's like he can make he can make time slow down. And there's That's chaos cool. around him and he's always got time and space and always picks out the right pass. He, he's just getting better. I think he's what is he like 24, 25? Like yeah. he, he's getting better. Like and he's starting to he's starting to finish games. He's starting to do ninety minutes now, which was a worry for me, because he looked like he was blowing every seventy minutes like, in games, but now he's he's full pelt the whole game. Um, the next manager's got got some player on his hands. He really has. Yeah, he, he, yeah. I just been watching him the last few weeks, so like, I think he's probably the most informed midfielder in the league right now. Is yeah. what he's doing and look i've been saying this for a while now I, I kept and people kept coming at me i've said it on other channels i said it like on my channel no one's obviously gonna come for me but i've said it on other channels yeah that alexis McAllister is the signing of the season and i was going yeah. now nah, i don't know about that yeah he's only been good for a couple of weeks he, he hasn't only been good for a couple of weeks it was excellent at the beginning of the season you try and play a role that don't suit you and he was still decent did we lose any games when he was the number nope. six? You know, like, come on. Like, he's 35 million British pound. That's what we're talking about here, guys. He has completely and utterly changed our midfield. He's rejuvenated it. Look where Liverpool were this time last season. Liverpool finished on the points Liverpool are on now. And we've got nine games to go. You know, he actually reminds me of. I can see people like putting names in the chat and that. He reminds me of David Silva in yeah, it's midfield. Intelligence. It's, it's, intelligence. it's intelligence. Yeah. And he makes the runs. He makes these ghost runs past players. And for it, like, he does those passes where they just go through teams, like, through lines. Of, of like midfielders and and defenders, there's not a lot of players that can do that, and there's not a lot of players that have got the kahunas to play passes like that, especially in a Klopp team. <laughs> like, yeah. Klopp team, you have to be safe because if you get caught out, they're down the other end, like, and we've got half our players beyond them. Um, yeah, not many players in our team that that will try that as well, and he he tries it and it works, and I just. Long may it continue. He's he's sensational. Oh, yeah, if, Brighton, it, if Brighton had him, they would have won. <laughs> yeah, That's how it, good it, he it, is. He's football intelligence, man. It's it, it's football. Inte it's about football intelligence yeah. at times, not just about what you can do with your feet. You know, and it, he's got both to his game. He's a, he's a tremendous tremendous footballer, and you know we're getting the best out of him right now. And he's coming into his own. He looks like he wants to boss everything. But yeah, I keep having arguments with people about this because obviously people go bring up Declan Rice and Declan Rice, right? So Declan Rice has been excellent for Arsenal all season, but one cost a hundred million and one cost thirty-five. There's a massive, massive difference here. They don't and, play the same football for me. No, and you know it, it, it's. I just, I just think 
I just think he's been race with Endo, if I'm honest. <laughs> I, 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 I literally think the only other midfielder doing bits up McAllister right now is uh, but, uh, Paqueta at West Ham because or Pakatara at West Ham, however you pronounce his name. He's a bit he, wider though, doesn't he? Yeah, but he's 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 been fantastic. I just hope he don't go to Man City, man. I, I think feel like I think if you want to put similarities between McAllister and someone else in the league, you probably look at Odegaard. Yeah, I'm looking at Odegaard to a certain extent, mate. Yeah, yeah, all great footballers, by the way. All of them, yeah, all, all, all fantastic them. footballers, all players I'd want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but look, let's talk about another player. Let's talk about a reason why Alexis McAllister is playing this well. Yep, Taru Endo again, again, fantastic yesterday, brilliant. Oh, uh, it, it's just. Oh, uh, I love uh, those uh, professional fouls by him. Yes, I just love them. We got a DM who actually fouls makes a me player excited. like and stops uh, counter attacks. You like know, fouling players makes me excited. I'm like, yes, he took him out. <laughs> it's just, I just, uh, we don't, we are too nice as a team at times, and Endo does the dirty stuff, man. Yeah. It's what I want my DM to do. Sometimes we like, yeah, just let. Just let them run. Just let them run. No, Endo's like, if I can't win the ball, I'm just taking you out. It's as simple as that. I wear a gum shield for a reason. You're going down. You know what I'm saying? You're going down. <laughs> and again, with Taro Endo, man, he, he is... Mac is 25. Yeah, McAllister's yeah. only 25. I don't believe yeah, Endo's 30. Endo's 25 yeah. as well. He plays like a 25-year-old. Check he his plays like, He plays like a 25-year-old as well. He has got no mileage in his legs whatsoever. Um... What a partnership they are at the moment, K-Mac. That partnership of Endo and McAllister. If you look since they've been playing together in this Liverpool team, when Klopp decided to put them into the team together, but McAllister a little bit more advanced, but Endo in that DM role, and then it's whoever's coming in there is that third choice midfielder. We've been on this run. And yep. talk to me about Endo. Fifth, was it 15, 16 million quid? 16 million quid. Nuts. Um, there's been stuff that's come out as well, like the, I think it was David Ornstein's come out and said like there was a lot of teams that that didn't look at Endo because they didn't have the data analytics that were looking at players that were over the age of 28, mm. and that's why he got missed out. Otherwise, he would have been on everyone's uh, everyone's data data sheet. Um, I mean, I've said this before: if we can keep Endo McAllister. Uh, Canate and Virgil van Dijk fit and play all our games, we win the league. We win the yeah. league. That four, that that square of that four are so dominant because we win all our headers, we win all our tackles, we win all of our midfield duels. That four is just a massive component and it doesn't matter who you play around them for me. I, I think we can win the league with just those four. You know, swap your strikers, swap your left back, right back. Uh, that, that's not an issue. It's just keep them fit. I think I think we're home and host. Um, he's been unbelievable. The next manager, like everyone talks about like the next manager, you know, maybe looking at a DM. Um, I mean, he, he might be looking at a DM, but it won't be to it won't be to take his place. It will be to to give him a rest, maybe as backup. I, I, yeah. I think I think he's on the on the team sheet next year. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know no why reason why. I don't know why you no take him out. Why you would. Before we carry on, guys. Before we carry on, we got like two hundred people in the house. Big up to everyone, uh, yeah. guys. Make sure we're hitting that like button, that fun button underneath for the video where you can see me and Kmet right now. There's only eighty-one likes, and there's two hundred and three people watching. Let's try and get to 100 likes right now. So, everyone, if you've not pressed that fun button right now, please go and press it. It really does help the channel more than you realise, guys. It pushes that algorithm out and uh, more people get to see my content and helps the channel grow and become what I want it to become. So, yeah, please go and smash that like button. It's free to do. Don't take you a second to do. You can still keep your eye on me and press at the same time, you see. It's all, yeah, let's get them likes up to 100 as quick as we can. I'd appreciate it. If we can get to 100 in the next five minutes, you know, more, this video will keep rolling and rolling as we're live. So, yeah, hit that like button, man. Hit that like button. 
But yeah, with with Ritardo Endo, it, uh, it, it is what it, it's what I keep saying in football. Ritardo Endo isn't a fashionable player. He isn't a fashionable name because he's not a fashionable player, not a fashionable name. He goes under the radar quite a lot. Um, I remember when we got Fabrizio. Uh, when we got Fabrizio. When we got uh, Endo. I don't want Fabri- him. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fabrizio, Fabrizio tweeted out and said Liverpool might have got the bargain of the season even before watching Endo play because he was quite aware how good of a footballer Wataro Endo actually was covering a lot of European football and stuff like that in his job. So, and I see a lot of other people come out and say it. So that's why when I heard people giving him this love and then I watched, um, I think it's a Liverpool fan from Japan, uh, a YouTube channel, um, great guy, go and find him. Um, he was the one who he spoke like did a 20 30 minute video on what Tyler Endo and said about how good he is and put little clips up and that. And then I went and watched him, I was like, Yeah, this might be a little player. Then I remember back to the World Cup, he was actually quite a player and quite decent. I was like, Let's just give him time, he's not going to be able to fit into our club straight away because he's coming from Germany, you know, he's 30. We play in such a mad way. Then I heard Jurgen Klopp in that, you know, talking to him, says, We need your legs. We play very offensively. And when I'm hearing Jürgen say that, and I'm like, he must really rate this kid. And then his debut was against ten against Liverpool with 10 men away to Newcastle. So straight away, I know Jürgen trust him. And it just took him a little bit of time, like it did with Fabinho. You know, Fabinho came in, weren't great to start with. It was all like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought Fabinho was quality. Then he went away, came back in the October at time. And then never lost his place again was immaculate. And I'm not saying that Endo's as good as Fabinho because Fabinho at his time was world class. We can't not say that. But what we're seeing from Wataro Endo now is a player that just needed a little bit of time to adapt around his new surroundings, and get to adapt his game to the Premier League because it's a lot quicker in German football. It's a lot more press. There's a lot more aggression, and now you're getting the benefits of it. You're getting the benefit in this endo time, guys. It's his time. And he's uh, it, it, for 15, 16 million quid for a defensive midfielder that suits the way we play in the system that we play. That's a heck of a bit of business for me, K-Mac. Heck of a bit of business. Uh, uh, absolutely. And I'll be the first to, to put my hand up and say that I wasn't impressed. And I thought I thought we, we should have gone for someone more well-known, but... But I'll take I'll take all that back. Um, I don't mind being wrong, when when being wrong means that that this guy's this guy's right and he's absolutely sensational. Um, I did I did do a little bit a little bit of looking at him as well um, for for his club and I just thought he's a bit too attack minded looking at him sometimes. But he got his personal trainer in, didn't he? And knuckled down and. We haven't looked back since. Like, I think we've, I think we've only lost. Have we only lost one game with him in? And that was against Endo's, United. Yeah, I don't think Endo's lost. A Premier was he in the Man United he game? He wasn't in the Man United game, was he? At their I ground? can't remember. I can't remember. Let me go back to it. I'll go back. Was to he? It. Was he at the quarter final game? For let, the me have, have, let me have. I can't remember now. Uh, I, I think, think he was. was. Yeah, I think, he lost. I, think only, I think it's the only game he's lost, mate. I'm trying to remember the Liverpool Arsenal game. Did he play in that game? I don't think he did. Did he? No, no. He was at the. Um, he was at the. Um, so, yeah. Asia so, so Wataru Endu's not lost a Premier League game yet. <laughs> there you go. He's not what he's not. He's not lost a Premier League game yet when he's been playing the number six. Yeah, Liverpool have only lost two Premier League games all season, and Wataro Endo hasn't been part yeah. of that. Um, of that. Uh, of that. So yeah, he hasn't lost a Premier League game in yet. I don't think Stevens a big Endo fan, which is fine. Which is fine. Um, yeah, he played in the Man United game, but you know that was a weird one, man. That was a very weird game. It really seven was. Three draws, uh, seven wins and three draws in the Premier League for Wataro Endo when he starts. Yeah, that's my DM. That's, that's my do. DM, man. That's my DM. That's my DM. Uh, Endo uh, stat, uh, stats, he wins more aerial battles than anyone. That's nuts. Yes! 
He's it five is. foot. <laughs> he's, he's, I'm five foot eight, and he's short. I think he's smaller than me, man. And he, I, I was watching. Does he climb this. on them? Does he climb onto know, them? I, I don't know, but I was watching the game yesterday. Yeah, I was watching the game closely, really closely yesterday. You get, and I, I had to rewind it a few times in certain bits, and I was like, "Is that Endo winning an aerial duel in the middle of midfield?" Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. So what is how he's got a heck he, of a leap on him? Is he is he using like key? You know that key that key strength that you that you get like <laughs> samurai strength or something to get that high. Endo's five ten. Endo That's, does not look five ten. He doesn't look five ten. He looks small. He does. He look looks small. small. Maybe because he's got. A I mean, five ten is small to me though. Like I'm I'm six foot four. Like so that I am looking down on five yeah, ten. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be saying you can just flick then if that. <laughs> but yeah, it's like that's uh, he don't look it on the pitch, does he? It might be because he's got a small, you know, bone yeah, maybe, structure yeah. and all that that he don't really look it. I mean, it's that, mad that en- the... it's mad that Endo looks bigger than Gapco when he plays, don't it? That's just a bit mad, don't it? That's well, just... we won't talk about Gapco because <laughs> he, he just doesn't. <laughs> he's six foot four. He's my height. <laughs> do you mean? Do you know what's mad? Peter Crouch is the tallest player I've ever seen, but he weren't great in the air. It's weird, isn't it? It's a yeah, weird yeah. one. He, Jota, he did score more. Great in the air. He has scored more headed goals than any other player in the Premier League, though. I know, Crouchy. but you'd think like he'd get fouled, wouldn't you? But he, you'd think he'd score more, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And, and when I look at all the shit, look, Cole Hines Riedler was one of the best small men I've ever seen in the air. It was fantastic. What about Tim, yeah. what about Tim Cahill? Do you remember Tim, Tim Cahill? Cahill? Yeah. Um, five foot five. Jota. Jota is Jotter. great in the air. Jotter, yeah. Jotter. Yeah. Endo, good in the air. There you go. He's five oh, he's eight. five eight. He's, five he's eight. my height. How tall is Jotter? Can, can someone find out how Jotter's, tall Jotter is? I think Jotter's five nine. Because I think he's five nine. Jotter's Where else is he Yeah, Jotter's different gravy, man. Yeah. It's different. How we do someone, doing on the likes here, guys? My, can someone pop my uh, YouTube link in the chat as well, please? Um, yeah, go on there. Oh, right. We're over 100. And, we're on 107 likes. Big up to the well chat. Done. We've got 217 people in here. Uh, we're only like 24 minutes in as well. So if we can get to 130 in the next 10 minutes, 130 likes in the next 10 minutes is your new goal, ladies and gentlemen. 130 likes in the next 10 minutes. Let's see if we can do it. It's 217 people watching. We've got 35 people watching on uh, on Twitter as well. 217 off YouTube. So, everyone, off, if you're watching on Twitter, on X right now, come on over. Make sure you come onto the channel. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I hope open, open up another tab, guys. Open up another tab. You know what to do. Um, Jot of five ten, yeah. Jot, yeah. Jot of five. I thought, yeah. Jot was around at five nine, five ten. He's not a big. Smaller. He's yeah, he's not. Why? He's not a six. He's not a six foot beast, is he? Yeah, Charles five eight. Five, eight. Everyone's like, everyone's like recorrecting each other. In the right, chat. I'm Googling this. I'm Googling. This. I'm Googling <laughs> Does anyone trust... actually know? Let's be honest. I, I, I don't trust. I don't trust anyone. <laughs> can Can someone go and find Jotter and get a tape measure? How? <laughs> Jotter is 178 centimeters. Okay. That don't help me, Google. That what? really doesn't help either. I don't <laughs> which know is five, it, which so. is which is five foot ten. So it's five foot ten. There you go. There you go. There you go. That's what I'm he's one hundred and seventy eight meters. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised he's winning headers then if he's that tall. He's five foot ten. He's five foot ten for a forward. Five foot ten. Yeah. Yeah. He's good in the air, man. He's good in the and air. And he's and he's back soon. And he's back soon. And this is the thing we're gonna get oh, that in a bit, Elliot. Harvey Elliott's bigger than both of them. Well, I did not know that. I thought Harvey no, Elliott was no. shorter than them. Uh, okay, no, this no, is a crazy no. day. No, no, there's no <laughs> way. Harvey Elliott is five foot eleven. Not a chance. Harvey, Harvey Elliott's not bigger than than Jota and Endo. He looks really short. Harvey Elliott is five foot seven. Yeah, I thought so. There you go. There Stop you it, go. chat. Stop it with the conspiracy <laughs> theories. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um yeah so 130 <laughs> likes in the next let's get to 130 likes in the next 10 minutes guys that'd be beautiful uh be honestly with the super it says question why is some fans still miserable this season we are 30 points better off this season compared to last season they are never happy 
I, I, I know you're on about honesty. I know you're on about honesty. There's some people on Twitter that are just miserable MFs. Uh, always will be miserable. They, I think, secretly they're not miserable, but they got to get that advertisement money off Twitter. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they need to they need to put uh, negative comments in. Oh, it's Dan to Klopp's brilliance, and yes, it is Dan to Klopp's brilliance. Well done. Well, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what are we doing now? Um, he, he, he deserves some mad credit this year, like yeah, mad he credit does. He's from, been beautiful. from what he's, happened last year. He's been beautiful. He's been beautiful. Um, and that I don't know if anyone's seen that video and him and uh, Sean, uh, who you know the guy that uh, almost lost his life in Rome, and uh, yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. Man. He's beautiful. just cla- he's a class act, isn't he? Just a class act. But and and he look, and he and he turned up to the Legends game to. To wish, um, to wish Sven well. Yeah, yeah, he's just a legend. He's, he's, he's a legend himself. Like get that statue up at the end of the season once we've won the treble. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, if he don't get a statue, that's that's just madness. Yeah, get that up. madness. Um, I know it's April Fool's Day, guys, but that's just that's nice. Yeah. You know <laughs> um, and though is for the reserve the Wolf team, Stephen, my man. Stephen's come with total. Endo hatred, <laughs> um, but yeah, I saw people talking about Stefan Bacetic there as well. By Tetic, how everyone plays his name. Um, I see everyone talk about Stefan Tetic there. And when I, I don't think he's an out and out six. Oh, no, I think st- I, I think he's, he's more eight. of an eight. Yeah, yeah, I think he's more of an eight. I think you know you could put Stefan and Endo and McAllister in the same midfield. Personally, I think that would work. Um, yeah, I, I don't have Stefan's out in that DM. I think he's a very cultured footballer. Let's put it that way. It's a cultured footballer. But let's, let's give another man prop. Sabozlai, Um I thought Sabozlai grew in the game as the game went like, yesterday. Um, Sabozlai has got what I always say we miss when he doesn't play, and it's his ability to run and press for 90 minutes. Now, that might be not the greatest skill in the world. Just when I say this, oh, he's pressing and he's running for 90 minutes. But you do not miss it when you don't play, especially in our Liverpool, mid, you know, in our midfield, the way we, we set up. And, you know, I thought as the game grew on yesterday, I think he got a bit more, he got a bit more composed in the game. You started to find areas further up the field where you want Dominic Sabozalai. He was getting in better attacking positions. He's getting hold of the ball in better areas of the pitch. I think that 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 cut back towards McAllister, the way they passed that, it was beautiful. It let McAllister just touch it, easy control and pass it into Mo straight away. That was a beautiful build-up to that goal, by the way, from start to front, back to front, beautiful build-up. But, yeah, Sabozla, he's not been the best in the last few weeks. We've all acknowledged that. Started his season really well, fell off a little bit. He has had injuries. First year in the Premier League. McAllister was always going to find it a little bit easier than Sabozla playing in the Premier League with Brighton for a couple of years. So I was pretty happy with Sabozla yesterday. came out. As I said, he grew into the game, showed what he's about. And I, I'm not... He's a quality footballer. There's no doubt about that. And for me, everything about Sabozla is for next season. I'm not going to really judge him on this season because he's new to the league. I I, I agree. Um, I mean, Sabozla is 23. I mean, seriously, like he's only he's a year older than Curtis Jones. That's that, that's in the grand scheme of things. So we need to look at it like that. Um, I thought the game flipped on his head when Don played attacking midfield and moved over to the left. It just did. Like we had more control, we had more attacking threat. Um, McAllister could could be released a bit more, and he wasn't having to do so much more work. Um, you know, he had that mazy run. For for me, for me, if you give Dom grass to run into, Dom comes alive. Yeah, like he'll have shots. He'll create. He'll put all their players out of position as he goes past them. I just, I just think he's absolutely. Oh, Curtis Jones is also twenty-three. Okay, I didn't realise that. Um, I mean that, 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 that's how young he is, and and it's his first season in the Premier League. I think he's got what seven goals and five assists in his first season. Right. 
I'm not going to complain of that at all. It's, it, and, it's and he's not been a doing terrible, do, it? and he's been doing doggies like most games. Like seriously, he must do about yeah. 13 miles every game. Yeah, we're, left we're, to right, back and forth. <laughs> like, he's learning his position. You know, with McAllister, it's a little bit more easy because he's been here in the league. Spots like younger coming into a new league. Usually you see that when they start really well, then tail off a little bit. That's what's happened to the Bozzoli. But he's a quality new, footballer. New manager. But... New, new yeah. manager. Dom's, Dom's going to be I just, insane. you know what? I just feel like Dom's a winger. Yeah, I do as well. I just feel like he's a wide man. Because yeah. if you look at Dom's strengths, they're all what you'd call a wide player. I don't see him as a 10. You know, I, I really don't see Dominic Sabozzo as a 10 because he's not what... I I see more McAllister as a 10 than Dominic yeah. Sabozzo. Yeah. If you look at the like a McAllister and Odegaard and these sort of players, that's not really what Dom is. You know, I look at his game and I think he needs that freedom to express. And I think if you he's play a, him as a wide player, I, I think you get that freedom from him a, personally. He's got, a, he's got a cultured finish on him as well. Like... He yeah. he can score a lot of goals from from positions. Like I don't I don't I don't know. I mean the next guy the next guy may may throw, may play him as a ten, the next guy may play him as a wide as a wide midfielder, or he might even put him put him on the on the left or the right of attack. I, I think I think if you played him as a left as the left winger, you know, where, where Diaz plays, I think you probably get a better a better output than Diaz, if I'm honest. Diaz was sensational yesterday, by the way. Best game I've seen him play. But I do think he'll score more goals and create more um, if you played him. But that's for the next manager. So far, he's been he's been good. Yeah. He's been good. And I've seen really. like he's better than he's better than Mason Mount. So if anyone says like that, sixty million was a waste of money. I'm not having that, like because Mason Mount was more and he's done nothing. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I, I think Sabozla like, is going to have a good career at Liverpool. You just, we just need to be yeah. patient. He's underperformed this season, and we're not going to pretend he hasn't. But he's he's got potential to be a quality footballer. Uh, big up to the chat. You hit over the hundred and thirty likes. I appreciate it, guys. I really do. Uh, next goal before the end of the video, two hundred likes. That's the next goal. We got two. Ooh, let's do we've it. Got, we got two hundred and fifty-one people in the house. Let, let me go and like as well. Hang on. Go and smash the like button. Go and smash. <laughs> I'll go and add one on there for you, mate. Go, go, go and smash that like button, guys. Let's get, the, let's get them likes up. 200 go, likes. Go in there now. Uh, Jamie, some fans said, how good is Almiron? He hasn't been coaching for long. And I'm like, he isn't the same as Xavi Alonso. The logic don't add up. Yeah, uh, yeah look, Almiron is going to be very good for Liverpool Football Club if he comes in, in my opinion. In fact, he's been managing longer than Shabby. He's been more successful than Shabby. Shabby Alonso was the emotional choice. I think Ruben Alperin is the correct choice. Let's that's, that's, uh, that's put it that way. Let's put it that way. Uh, fans say Trent can't defend, but I feel uh, even Bradley struggled because Mo doesn't trap back. And Dom had to do leg work for Mo, in my opinion. Yeah. Look, I think there's, I, I, I think there's a striking issue in Liverpool's team and it is on the right hand side of our pitch I don't actually think it matters who plays right back uh, you could have one Bissaka playing right back as a defensive right back who don't go forward you could uh, like you could have a very good right back sitting there you could have Ben White sitting there Liverpool there's always going to be issues Liverpool are very lopsided very very lopsided and Mo yeah look Mo's getting to a point in his career now where he doesn't feel like he has to, you know, he wants to prolong his career. So he's only box to box for 90 minutes every single game. Yeah, I, I just I, I just think, um, yeah, I just think, yeah, get uh, we've got a problem on that right-hand side. But I think something tactically has to change next season. Uh, we get away with it at the moment because we've got quality players on that right-hand side. You know, Conor Bradley got a bit cooked yesterday. but. Connor Bradley's aggression on that side of the pitch was immense. You know, he won the ball back a load. This is the thing Second as well. Half. He half won the ball back. He won the ball back so much yesterday. And his aggression further up the pitch is what Klopp wants. 
I know as long as Klopp is manager of Liverpool Football Club, we're never going to have a sitting fullback. He wants that aggression from his fullbacks. He wants them to get up on the pitch, push high up, stop them attacking. It's that risk for a world football. And, you know, I think Conor Bradley, no, I don't think it matters who we play there, Trent or Conor Bradley at this moment in time. I think we're still going to have the same issues on that right-hand side of the pitch. But the problem is, it, well, it's not a problem. We get away with it because of the quality of the players. Conor Bradley's a quality footballer. Trent's world-class. You know, Spozla on that right-hand side, McAllister on that right-hand side. Whoever's playing on that right-hand side of midfield, they're quality footballers. Salah's world-class at what he does at right wing, no matter if he doesn't trap back. So, yeah, we're lopsided and we get counted on by every team we play in Europe or in England on that right-hand side of the pitch. But we get away with it because of the quality of footballer in that position. And I think that's why Klopp's never changed it, in my opinion, K-Mac. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. Um, for me, yesterday, um, I, I would say Brad, I say Bradley, Bradley didn't have a great first half mainly because Gomez was going inverted, and Bradley's an attack, an attacking right-sided player, so he was up the other end of the pitch. He was having to do too much, too much work. Um, I just, ugh, everyone was, everyone was on Salah's back. I mean, Steve Nichol, bloody castigated him like saying like he really frustrates him he misses too many chances like he scored he scored a goal that won the game and he also provided the assist for the goal like and he also provided the assist for the for the goal which wasn't a goal which was offside by a toenail or or by the crappy var lines that were too thick as far as i'm concerned um and their goalkeeper pulled off two really good saves from Salah. Like, I know he had loads of chances, but Salah just does what Salah does. And we won the game because of him. Like, we're top of the table because of Salah. Like, as, as yeah. much as we all think he had a bad game, Salah just does what Salah does. Like, I'm convinced if Salah played the Man United game, we'd be in the FA Cup bloody semi-final. Like, if he'd have played the whole 90 minutes. We'd be never, in the FA Cup semi-final. <laughs> n- never take your goal scorers off a pitch. That's my Never opinion. take a world-class player off the pitch. Ne- ne- never take your match winners. <laughs> I-, I Try and keep your match winners on the pitch. This is the thing with Mo. And I agree. Mo Salah is very frustrating at times. We all agree yeah. with this. I don't know any Liverpool yeah. fans who don't go, Mo, you're doing my nuts in. You know? But then he scores and wins you the game of football. And you just go, all right. That's what Mo does. It's just that's Mo Salah. He can be very frustrating. He can be playing very selfishly. But then, my God, look at him come alive. Look at the assist he almost got yesterday. By the way, that Diaz's goal was offside. Firstly, I've looked at that offside so many times. He is a level. Yeah, he's completely level. He's not advanced to that. Def- it should have been a goal. Sure. That assist from Mo Salah was world class. His finish was beautiful. He's getting that ball into the, receiving that ball into the box under pressure and putting it in the goal in the net was beautiful. That's Mo Salah, man. This is one side. Yes, he's frustrated, but look, he almost had a world class assist if the goal was on side, and he had a great finish. And we're still saying he's frustrating. That's and, why and, you don't take that him off. Save that save from their goalkeeper. I don't people. I don't think people realise how good that save was. The xG on that save. I think it was 1.7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mad, wasn't it? it was that was great full save. stretch out, out, the, out the corner. The thing about Salah as well, though, is he's a bit rusty because he hasn't played a lot of first-team football. No. And you could tell. You could tell he was snatching. You could tell he was just... He was doing what, like, he was doing what Nunes used to do. Trying too hard. Like, trying yeah. things that... Mo, just He weren't relaxing. Take a breather. Like, just... Take it in your stride properly, you know. Stop doing P rollers back to the goalkeeper. <laughs> it was so annoying. It, it, oh yeah, some of them like pass backs. So I was like, Mo, what are you doing? There you got it. Look, do you know what's mad about Mo Salah? Yeah, he's only played what two or three games since New Year's Day, and I, I think know. he's only two goals off top goal scorer. Yeah, that's mad. And he's a right winger. Yeah, that's just I. I uh, and, again, and also, thought, and also, two of his goals won us games. By the way, <laughs> just I, to put yeah. that into perspective. 
<laughs> and and if I look at Darwin yesterday, I don't think Darwin was great yesterday, like Mo weren't. But I tell you what, Darwin does. Darwin's running off the ball is fantastic. He stretches the opposition. That's why we get chances, guys. Take Darwin out of our team. Yes, it might not. He might look look, look effective. Yeah, but you take Darwin out of our team. We don't get as many chances because Darwin's running in behind and running off the ball, stretching the opposition, opens the game up for us. So take Darwin out of the team. We don't have 30 shots yesterday. We don't get as many chances as we did because he he's running in behind and he, him stretching the game for us and opening up spaces would disappear. So as much as Darwin on paper and visually maybe didn't have a great game yesterday, his ability at running without the ball and stretching the opposition opens the game up for us. So, yeah, I'll give Darwin credit for that, man. I'll give Darwin credit I, for and, that. And can we also talk about Darwin's shot while he was lying down? Yeah, he almost scored lying down. <laughs> it was a bit outrageous, that, man. I don't know how the goalie saved that either, to be fair. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, that it, was it, mental. And, big up, and don't, uh, don't worry, chat. Don't worry, chat. We're going to talk about Diaz. Yeah, we're going to get... We're going to get... We're, Go Huge get Darwin flowers. now because Huge flowers. Dar Darwin Nunes yesterday, Matt. Look, as you guys know, I've been critical of Darwin Nunes and uh, not Darwin Me Nunes, too. Luis Diaz. I've been critical of Luis Diaz, and the reason I've been critical of Luis Diaz is because I know he's a quality footballer. I'm, I wouldn't be critical of an average footballer, I wouldn't care, but I'm critical of Luis Diaz because I know he's a quality footballer. Yesterday, for me was arguably his best performance of the season in a whole contribution to a 90-minute game. I thought he was immense yesterday, absolutely immense. He's an instant finisher. I've always said that about Luis Diaz. He's an instant finisher. You saw that with his goal. When he doesn't have to think about it, he usually does score. His ability to defend and attack at the same time is second to none. He's such an underrated skill to be able to defend and attack at the same time, the way he does it. His his energy levels are ridiculous. They're like 100% all game. I don't know how he does it. He doesn't fall apart. He looks as sharp and bright in the 88th minute as he does in the second minute. It, 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 and he's constantly going, going, going. He's taking on fullbacks now. This is what I like. He's taking on fullbacks now. He's cutting in and taking on centre-backs. He's... Uh, yeah, Luis Diaz, he should have had two goals yesterday for me. I think that goal was onside. I think he was level, personally. You know, they didn't even draw the line from the bloke's butt, by the way. That was keeping Luis Diaz offside. They drew it from his feet. They drew it from his feet. Um, he should have had two goals yesterday. I thought he was amazing. That's the Luis Diaz I want to see every single... Like, he'll never be a clinical forward. But what he does on that left-hand side, if he can continue doing that, perfectly happy with it, man. Perfectly happy with it. That was a, um, a great play a great play yesterday. And big up, honestly, with a super chat as well. It says, how bad people think Lucho is in terms, uh, but barely attack us on the left-hand side because Lucho tracks back. Murray's great, but track back sometimes. Yeah, exactly. This is what I'm saying. Big up, honestly. This is what I'm saying about uh, Luis Diaz on that side. Tax and defence. Think, think about Lucio yesterday. Is it, it felt like it felt like Lucio literally just came off the team bus from Colombia and went straight into our team. Um, he played exactly how he played against um, Brazil at, at, um, at West Ham Stadium. I think he was just he was off the hook. He was on it from start to finish. That's the best game I've seen him play in a red shirt. He deserved two goals yesterday. There's not many players to score that goal. That first goal. Like he karate kicked it. That was that was like that was like an um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic goal. It was like a Zlatan goal. Like it was just pure instinct, absolutely sensational from start to finish. And the thing about it as well, which became really prominent in that game, Lucho just doesn't get the ball passed to him. Like he really doesn't get the ball much. I'd love to see how many times he had to come from the left-hand side into the centre to pick the ball up because he just wasn't getting any service. Because when Salah's on the pitch, everything goes to Salah. Just everything goes to him. And, you know, he's working with scraps. And, you know, 
that was a great second goal as well, where he not make the goalkeeper like full pelt. Like if we get if we keep that Nuno, um, if we keep that that Diaz to the end of the season, this kind of form, he's going to be so important. He really is. Oh yeah, so important. He does yeah, me head in though, fouling players. He does my head in fouling players, especially in our half. I know he wants to win the ball, but he did give away probably about ten of those fouls that they got. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, uh, he's a bit eager. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 he, he is. He's eager to defend. He's easier. What I like about Luis Diaz actually, he's very eager to get the ball going and get in counter attacks. That's what he tries to do. So he's very eager at winning the ball back. And look, I don't mind it so much, but I, I understand what you're saying. But that just shows great determination. That's what I like to yeah. see. He, yeah. He's eager to win it back. And that's why he plays. Because we've been talking about it. Like, he hasn't been tremendous all season. He's, but when you see games like he has been played the last few weeks, you're like, that's why he plays. Come on, but this is what Cody Gakpo doesn't do. <sighs> this is the difference. You know, Cody Gakpo is a left winger. But he's not going to do what Lucho does at that left wing for Jurgen Klopp, and that's why Luis Diaz plays, in my opinion. Uh, and that's why, uh, and that's why Cody plays through the middle when he plays because he uh, can't uh, do uh, what Lucho does. And that's why Cody doesn't get in the team now, if I'm honest. And, and I'd like to talk about Cody as well because he did something yesterday that really, really annoyed me. Really, really annoyed me, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. No, go on. Talk about that, Catherine. So we, we're in like the 93rd minute and you've got Joe Gomez doing daft stuff because he did do daft stuff like in the 90th minute. Don't know why. He kept on like bombing forward, trying to play 40 yard passes and like just doing daft stuff. But he left us wide open and their man went right down the left, uh, right down the left hand side. And Gapko, who literally just come on the pitch, was jogging back. Like jogging back. The man ran past him. I'm like, oh my god, you literally just got on the pitch. Like, run your ass off to get that guy. And I, honestly, okay, uh, yeah, I know. I'm, uh, I'm not okay, gonna, okay. I'm talk about that more. I mean, I mean, even <laughs> yeah. like, e- like even Gravenberch did a sprint. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see Gravenberch back, by the way. G- yeah, Gafco nice did get a yellow card back. for pulling a guy back as well, by the way. But but it was before that. When he let the man run, run past him, I I just feel with with Gakpo, I, I I just feel with Cody at this moment in time. When I watch Lucho on that left hand side right now, and the way he defends and attacks pretty much at the same time, his energy players. levels in that left hand side, be able to take on his defender and fall back and hold the ball up, and uh, as a trick in him, as a as a turn in him, as a bit of skill in him, I see why. Cody played through the middle in his Jurgen Klopp team. It, it's just, you, I sort of now understand it. And yeah, Lucho, the last few weeks and today has been, uh, last, uh, the last game has been, uh, it's been fantastic. And I just, if he carries that up till the end of the season, we're going to have a great end of the season. There's no doubt about it. But look, um, I thought Kwanzaa and uh, uh, Connor Bradley got a bit in that first half. The two youngsters playing together, they felt it a little bit. I thought the second half, them two grew the game and got better. Uh, there was a bit in the game when Quanta just completely powered off the centre forward, and then then just and a Cruyff turn, turn. Then and a Cruyff, Cruyff turned turn in the box. Cruyff <laughs> turned it in the box and then just took the ball and passed it on and moved the game on. There, there's something I special. Nearly, about I did nearly have an art attack then, though, mate. To be fair, yeah, it's there like is what are you doing, doing Cruyff turns in your box. <laughs> that that that. That for me is a sign of a very confident in his ability centre back. Mm. Kwanzaa has got he's very confident he's in in his own skin, he's very confident in his ability, and it doesn't matter if he was playing for Joey Barton last season, which is completely nuts. nuts um I, I it, love the it, fact that Joey Barton's like proper bigging himself up for like yeah, he thinks he him into the guy he is like he thinks he didn't think <laughs> he developed him. It's hilarious. I know, I was like, shut up, Joey. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's got a great career in front of him. I don't see. Yeah. I, I, see I, I don't even see him as a youth player no more. He's, he's a Liverpool no. player. He's part of the squad. I don't see Conor Bradley as a youth boy anymore. I just see him as part of the squad now. You know, you know, 
they don't seem like that to me. They don't seem like kids anymore. They seem like proper, yeah, they seem like proper footballers now, proper pros. But look, it was a great win for Liverpool yesterday. It keeps us top of the Premier League. It put us back on top of the Premier League, should I say. And, you know, obviously we're going to talk about the Arsenal-Man City game. So I think we should talk about it because... It, this Premier League race is going to go down to the wire. So we had our game, an exciting game of football, back and forth between Liverpool and Brighton. And it's like, wow, that's that's exciting football. Then I was chilled. We got our win. We're top of the Premier League. I could sit back and I don't know about you guys, sit back and relax. You know, enjoy my Easter Sunday watching Arsenal versus Man City. Yeah. 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 That was a, that was, yeah. That was, I was looking forward to that game, but it was 95 minutes. So I'm not getting back. Um, crap. Is there our look here? Is there a, right? I'm going to, I, let's, let's do this first. I'm shocked how bad Man City, yeah, bad, how bad Man City were at home. I'm at, oh. I don't, I'm actually, I don't think Man City have been that good recently in a way. Um, but here's one thing I will say about Manchester City, yeah. The one thing I would say about Manchester City is that they lack pace. No pace in that team yesterday. Haaland, right, we all know what player Haaland is, yeah? Haaland is a world-class finisher, but you need to get the ball to Haaland. He's not really going to make his own goals that much. So you need to get the ball to him. You need to find him in space, yeah? You know, that's what Haaland does. You find him in space, Haaland will finish it off. But you got no pace around him. Like it was pretty easy for us, or in my opinion, to defend against Man City the other day. No, Liverpool have done it before. Liverpool have sat deep against Manchester City and limited them to nothing and won a game of football. Arsenal defended beautifully. They should be congratulated for it, in my opinion. But City, man, I I thought they were dreadful. They're when I watch this City team with no pace in it, no Carl Walker at fullback, no Ortega in goal, they don't... I'm starting to feel like... Does, it, does City have this world-class squad that everyone goes on about? Now, do, well, do Man City actually have this world-class squad? Or do they just have a quality squad? Because I don't think City have a good team like they did last season, in my opinion. Um. They've lost Ake as well now, by the way. Um, yeah, that was a big miss. I like Ake. Um, it was it was an interesting game because because if anyone was going to win that game, it was individuals. They don't play like a team at the moment. I feel like they play like individuals. Like if anyone was going to win that game, it was going to be a Rodri or possibly Bernardo. Like you know. They go to guys. We're going to step up. Um, you know, it, it was a really terrible game. It was really terrible. Like, like they bring Doku on and Grealish, and it's all it's all it's all tricks and flicks. But there's no end product. Um, you know, Kevin De Bruyne. Is Kevin De Bruyne starting to wane now? Do you think? Do you think he's starting to starting to lose his 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 um his commanding presence in a game? I, you know, I, I, they took I, Foden I, off because Foden was anonymous. Like he, he couldn't get into the game. I, I think when I look at KDB, I think the injuries are starting to catch him up a little bit, as they will. What is he? Thirty two now. How old is KDB? Is he thirty? I think he's thirty three. He'll be thirty three now. So it, getting on a bit. Inju injuries are going to start catching him up. And it might just be me. I, I get everyone in the chat, right? But he looks heavy to me. I, I, I'm not saying he's fat or anything like this. I'm not fat shaving him or anything like this. He does like his I, concerts. He, 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 yeah, yeah. He looks... <laughs> I don't know if anyone in the chat understands what I'm trying to say here, but he looks heavy. He doesn't look athletic as he used to. He looks a bit... He looks like he's a bit thicker than he used to be since the injuries. Um, he looks heavy when he runs. I don't know if people understand what I'm trying to say. I'm not calling him fat or anything like that or anything. But Kevin, he, Kevin de Blob, someone wrote in the chat. Sorry. <laughs> he, he, he looks 
he just looks heavy. You know, I, I don't know if it's because the injuries have caught him up. I don't know if it's because <laughs> the injuries have caught him up, but yeah, he looks he looks have worn out. Have you seen out. that comment? Grealish has cursed him with that haircut. Oh yeah, <laughs> Kevin, go back to the go back to the number two round the sides in the back, trim it on yeah. top. You know, it's go back to the old Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, even it's, even even Trent got cursed with a with a funny haircut. Like he cut his off and he. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks sluggish at the moment. He looks sluggish. Yeah. Uh, KDB is sluggish because he's waiting for Madrid or Bayern to come calling his dossier desire to galvanise the trophy quest after a treble. We're a bigger man. Uh, I, I don't know. I just don't know. He just don't look. When I watched De Bruyne last year, he's getting into shape. Year, he's getting into shape for a Saudi Arabia transfer. Sorry, James. James. <laughs> Name his new logo. He ain't fat. He's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not even fat. If I was Kevin De Bruyne's shape, I'd be absolutely fine. You know what I mean? But what I'm trying to... He, he doesn't look... For the midfielder that he is, and he needs a lot of the ball to do what you want. If you've got Kevin De Bruyne in your team, you want him to have the ball most of the match, don't you? That's what you yeah. want. You want Kevin De Bruyne to have most of the ball for the whole match if he's on your team. He doesn't look physically in shape to have the ball at the moment all the time to run the game from midfield. He doesn't look like he can run the game right now. And I don't know if that's just because the injuries are catching him up. He's now into his 30s. He's, be, he's 32, going on to that 33. He's, you know, and he's not as athletic as a Foden, who's much younger. He's not as athletic as, I would say, a Bernardo Silva either. They just don't seem... I, I don't know what he's. I think he's a world class player. I just don't know if he's coming to the end of his uh, his time at Manchester City. You know, I just don't know if he's coming to the end of his time at Manchester City. Uh, let me get for a few supers here. Uh, big up Gang and Deep. Uh, he says uh, if we beat United at Old Trafford, I may start to believe. But until we get over the line, I can never back us to win the league and title races from past years. Hashtag PTSD. I'm going to get on to our title run at the end of the video. But big up Gang and Deep. I understand what you're saying. Gang, Gang and Deep, Man United had 26 shots at them against Brentford, by the way. Yeah, they should have got annihilated. Should have got annihilated. <laughs> um, <laughs> with Cody, uh, be it honestly with the Super as well. With Cody, I feel it's a confidence and it's all in his head. I agree. I can see it in his face. It feels like an integral struggle. Cody just needs to calm down. Yeah, Cody's a massive. I, I, I don't. I, I think he needs to maybe get angry because I think he's too calm. It's yeah. too passive. Like it's it, it just KDB is washed. <laughs> I won't call him washed. A bit harsh. But... A bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> no problem with the Champions him... League. <laughs> He's still the thing with Kevin De Bruyne. He can do, still be devastating if he gets hold of the ball. I think what's happening at the moment since he's come back from his injury is that. He's finding it a bit more difficult to get himself into the games. And that's why he looks so frustrated a lot of the time. You know, he comes off looking really frustrated because he can't get into the games as much as he once did. And it's the injuries. Injuries start to play a havoc on your physique, on your body, on your on everything. And when you get into your 30s, as everyone knows, if you're in your 30s or 40s now, guys, well, unfortunately, like me and Kay Wecker, but if, if, when you get into that, Sometimes it's a struggle just getting out of bed, let alone playing football. Do you know what I mean? And recovering from injuries. So, you know, when you know when you're old is when you make a noise getting off the armchair. You know, when you go, oh, ah, like, that, that's when you know. That's when you know it's, it's time. <laughs> and I just feel like I don't think De Bruyne are. Let me know one in the chat. I don't think De Bruyne is one of them players who can play to his 35, 36. I don't know. I don't know if De Bruyne is one of them players, man. I, I, I just I think... think I, I don't think he wants to stay in football either, by the way. I don't think he's one of those guys that wants to stay in football, so I don't think he'll be a coach either. I think, he, I think he'll probably retire, maybe buy, maybe buy a pop band. <laughs> yeah. He just... Did you see? Did you see? Um, did you see it when they when they won the treble? He bought he bought every every person in the um, in the team, um, like a phone, which 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 had like Man United. Uh, Man United. <laughs> that would have been weird. <laughs> it had uh, Manchester City um, colours on it and stuff. Um, yeah, just thought that was yeah. a bit weird. 
And um, they probably all left them in the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and never used them. Uh, Skip 2 says it's horrible. Jamie's stretching hurts now. <laughs> it does, man. So this is what... Uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne does look a bit fat. I think it's just where De Bruyne is getting older and he's he just looks a bit heavy on the pitch when he runs. And uh, I've got people going to think I'm fat shaming him. I'm not. He's in great shape. I want to be in Kevin De Bruyne shape. What I'm trying to say, he just looks a bit, he, his movements look a bit slower than they did a year ago. And if I'm sitting now, I'm probably looking for a Kevin De Bruyne replacement. And Kevin De Bruyne is still world-class. He could go on to the end of this season and put in world-class performances. There's no doubt about it. He could have world-class performances against Real Madrid. I just don't think Kevin De Bruyne can run the game like he used to last year. Last year, he ran the game better than anyone in world football. He was just immaculate. This year, I think the injuries have caught up with him a little bit. And maybe next year you see the best of De Bruyne again. But, yeah, he's just, he's getting pulled off. He's getting subbed a lot like now. He's looking frustrated on the pitch. And I think that's because he's frustrated with himself because he's not doing what he knows he's capable of doing right now. And still a quality footballer, though. Still you, quality footballer. You, you can tell as well, you can tell as well with City that Gundogan, was so pivotal to them. Like he did so much in that midfield. The oh, yeah. underrated. And you can tell now. Like the guys they've got in to replace him, they just they just don't they don't replace him. Like, you know, the likes of Kovacic and, and Nunes, Mateus Nunes, none of them have been able to emulate anything that that he that he was able to do. Yeah. But uh, this is a great comment as well. This is what I'm saying. De Bruyne will have moments in games still. He just can't control games like he used to because he's just getting older. It's just the way it is. But he will have pivotal moments in games still, exactly. He, he will. He's still dangerous, man. He's still quality. He, he's still one of the Someone's fighting wild this chat on KDB. We are Liverpool. Because <laughs> we're just talking about... We're just talking we about, talking about the game. All, we're looking to talk about all of them. Um, I, I, I and like Harland, I think Harland struggles if he can't get the Bruyne close miss. to him. Like, if you if you can keep, I, I, I've noticed it lately. If you can keep Harland and De Bruyne far away from each other, yeah, you've got a very good chance of either getting a point or winning against Man City. The closer them two are to get to each other, if you get into Bruyne around five to ten yards away from. Uh, Harland at any time in the pitch, you're in danger. If you can keep them as far apart as possible, you can close Harland up and you've got a massive chance of getting a point or win- beating uh, Manchester City. Liverpool did it the other week and Arsenal did it yesterday. Take them out of the, t- take them out of the game. Keep them apart. Keep 20, 30 yards ar- away from them. And it's going to be very hard for Harland to get in the game because... If you look at Haaland at Man City, it's De Bruyne and Haaland. It's that show where he just lays it on, lays it on, lays it on. And sometimes it's not the pass from De Bruyne to Haaland. It's the pass from De Bruyne to someone else who then finds Haaland. Yeah. So if you if you can keep them two further apart, I think you've got a, um, a much better chance of getting things against Man City because Haaland's a weird one. It, aesthetically... He's not a pleasing footballer to look at, is he? He doesn't really do much. You know, against Liverpool, against City now, you look at him and you think, I, I'm going to say something for the chat right now. Let's put something in the chat right now. I want everyone in the chat to answer me this with a yes or no. That's all I want in the chat. From There's 300 people in the chat. Just a yes or no. Is Haaland, is Haaland a world-class footballer? Just a yes or no in the chat. Is Haaland a world-class footballer? I just want a yes or no in the chat. Just a yes or no in the chat. Is he a world-class footballer? A lot of no's. Is, is he a robot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Because a lot of no's. All right. And this is where right, I'm going to give a bit of context to it now. I'm going to give the Haaland stuff a bit of context now. Is Haaland a world-class footballer? For me, no. But is he a world-class finisher? 
Yeah. What, you know, it, what is he? Because I have seen Haaland being kept quiet quite a bit at times. If you give Haaland the freedom of your defence, he will annihilate you, right? Because that's his game. I just don't know if he's a world-class footballer, but a world-class finisher. I look at other parts of his game, I don't think he's good enough. You know, as a finisher, I think he's different gravy. Different gravy as a I, finisher. I feel that I feel that you have to play a type of way for Haaland to flourish. And it's and it's a bit anti football for me. It's not pretty. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of playing around to isolate Haaland in positions and he doesn't he doesn't he's not involved in any part of the play whatsoever. He's just the foot on the end. That's it. And he, he very rarely has more than thirty touches in a game. And I'm not and I'm not joking. I am honestly not joking. Like he doesn't have more than thirty touches in a game. Playing us he, he had fifteen touches against us. Mm. You know, he doesn't have a lot of the ball. Um everybody else touches the ball and then he's the one that puts it in the back of the net. Um I feel like I feel like the reason why he's probably not scoring as much is probably because they're not getting him involved as much mm-hmm. now because they know he's not really going to be able to do much. So he doesn't really have a lot to do. And you have to rely on a guy that hasn't touched the ball after the game to then score that one chance. That's really hard because you, you're coming into that quite cold, aren't you? Yeah. You see what I mean? No, totally, man. I, 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 it hardens a flat track bullet. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just he think does, he, does, he does remind me of Suarez sometimes. Remember when yeah. we had Suarez and he was just battering teams? He scored. Uh, uh, he scored like the third, the fourth, and the fifth goal. But you had, you had your Daniel Scourge that scored the opener. If if you know what I mean. Yeah, I just I just feel like you get a lot of that. Haaland would frustrate me if I if he was in my team, a bit like Salah does, but then he puts the ball in the back of the net and wins you the game of football. I think it's that kind of player. Like if I look at Harry Kane, I personally think Harry Kane is a better all round footballer than Haaland, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think if Kane played for City last season, I think Kane gets similar amount of goals. You know, maybe not as much as Haaland, but I still think he wins the Premier League with City and gets 30-odd Premier League goals, in my opinion. But I also think Kane's uh, an all-round better footballer than Haaland. But Haaland's young, man. Haaland's young and he's going to learn the game and he's going to get better and better and better and better. And, 20, you know, 23 touches, Jamie. Someone was yeah. there Haaland had yesterday. He never has more than 30 touches. Look, I'm, I'm not saying Haaland is Suarez, by the way. I'm just saying finishing-wise, like flat-track bully. Hmm. Like, in that perspective, like Suarez scored a lot of goals, but he scored the third and the fourth and the fifth goal, if that makes sense. He didn't score the opener. Haaland doesn't score a lot of openers. And if you think about it, you can look at that. Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola wanted Harry Kane before Haaland. Yeah, no. um, but they couldn't I'm, do I'm the deal. I'm glad they didn't get him, by the way. They couldn't do the deal. Um, Scottish Bear Darwin is a better footballer, but Haaland's a better finisher. This is going to break the internet. You know, no. yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that, Scottish player. I, I actually think Darwin is more impactful in a ninety-minute game, but Haaland will get you the winning goals. I think that's the. I think that's the difference. So, I, look, Haaland will win you more games of football than Darwin. I think we can pretty much all agree on that. But Darwin is more impactful in the games himself. But Darwin suits us. The way we play. This is the thing. Would Haaland suit us as much as Darwin? Don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know whether it would under Klopp. But if you're going to use your midfielders, like we've got some of the best, the best creative midfielders in the league, easily. Yeah. Then yeah. I, 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 
I, I'll keep saying it. I think Dar- he's got more goals. He's got more goals. Haaland will win you more games of football, in my opinion, than Darwin will. But Darwin's impact in a 90-minute game, for me, is a little bit more impactful than Haaland right now. But Haaland will win. You know, Haaland could have 10 touches all game but score two goals. I don't think Darwin could do that. But Darwin would be more impactful in the game itself, if that makes sense. But what I'm trying to say is uh, making sense. But you know, Dar- uh, Haaland's quality, man. Haaland's quality. But I, I always, I always wanted Harry Kane. Harry Kane's just. Yeah, he, Harry he's Kane. Just, he'd just be incredible for Liverpool. He just would. Like, Harry, look, Harry Kane. We wouldn't have to what? change our system if Harry Kane played, but no. we would if Haaland played. Yeah. So, right, City Arsenal. Uh, it's a weird game. Like, it was a strange game because it was nil nil. Just crap. Uh, <laughs> it, it was very boring. I didn't expect that kind of game. I thought Arsenal would go for it. I thought they'd put everything in there, but like, and just go for it. Now, you know, 24 hours after, look, like, my opinion of this is, yeah, I had different opinions than a lot of people. I put, I thought Arteta bottled it a little bit, person, like just a tiny bit, um, because. Arsenal, and I'm not going to blame more Arsenal fans here. I think Arsenal, when we talk about Arsenal fans, I think we like we shouldn't talk about the majority of them. There's a minority of Arsenal fans that have got very loud mouths, and their loud mouths carry over and make everyone think it's actual all Arsenal fans talking. But they were going on for the last few weeks about they got the best squad in the league. They would have more players in a combined one eleven than City. City are there for the taking. We go go to the Emirates and show who we're about, and go put it on them, and all this shit, and it never happened. And now, them Arsenal fans are backtracking on what they said, and it, it just. But we've all heard it, yeah. We've all heard it. I. It's a better point for Arsenal than it is Man City. I, I, I totally agree with all everyone will say on that. I just think if Arsenal fans go back and look at that game today. If they are Arsenal fans go back and look at that Man City game today, which is very hard to do because it's the worst 90 minutes I've seen all season, but if you go back and watch that game, I think Arsenal fans might look at it and think City were there, man. City were there for the taking. You know, we, they've had... Go on. We'd be fuming. Honestly. I was, I was fuming. We when would we be fuming if we field. didn't win that game. Yeah. Honestly. Like, they were, they were terrible. Like, We'd be, I'd be raging if we didn't win that game. Like, what annoys me the most? Why were Man City so up for the game against us, but they weren't up for the game against Arsenal? <laughs> like, why is it always us? Everybody's up for the game against us. Like, honestly, they they rolled over and Arsenal could have tickled their belly and scored. Like, yeah, it, it, Saka it, had so many chances to go at to go at uh, Guardiola. I'm so glad we didn't get Guardiola, by the way. Like he look, he looks like another player that that we um, we dodged the bullet. Lavia, um, Guardiola, you know, they're starting to it's starting to make a lot of sense why we don't we didn't sign those players. I just find it mad that I I, I look at that game. I I've gone back, you know, looked at the highlights a little bit, and you think, big up Becky, thank you very much. I, I look at that game like. Did Arsenal just miss a trick? Because City had no pace in their team, yeah? There was no Doku weren't playing. There was no Grealish, you know. Um, Haaland, you know, you kept him pretty under control because, you know, Saliba and uh, Gabriel did a job on him. I'm just wondering if you look back and I'm thinking, right, if we just pushed up a little bit, just pushed up a little bit, because City had 72% of the ball. And the only reason City had 72% of the ball is because Arsenal decided to defend deeply. So City had 72% of the ball. But I just feel like if Arsenal just maybe pushed up five yards and went, you know what, that's, you know, this City team, they might actually be there. Now, in-game tactics, at the beginning of the game, I think Arteta got his tactics right. But as the game goes on, you've got to see what's in front of you. And I think there was a couple of substitutions that Arteta did when he brought on a centre-back and a defensive midfielder. And I think, no, because for me, Klopp wouldn't. Maybe it's because we've got Klopp and Klopp would just go, right, they're there for the kill. Let's try and go for it. 
I, I, I just feel like Arsenal had the title in their hands before the international break. The momentum was with Arsenal. We can all agree with that as a Liverpool fan. I would say Arsenal had all the momentum for the international break. They were playing very good football and smashing teams, no matter who it was. They were still beating polite teams. They beat us. They beat us well. As a Liverpool fan, I, uh, we, you beat us well, I agree. And you was on this trajectory, and your trajectory was that going that way. Your momentum was going that way. You Arsenal, I'm not saying all Arsenal fans, as I said, we, the lad is Arsenal fans. We, we beat Talk ourselves. Everyone. We beat ourselves yeah. against Arsenal. <laughs> and... <laughs> They just, I just feel like if you look back on that game today, Arsenal fans might be thinking, actually, City were there. They had no Carl Walker, no Edison. Yeah. Ake got taken off in no John Stones. In 20 games of the game. John Stones weren't playing. Um, Foden you know, got pulled off. Foden Gre- got taken off. Foden got taken off. Grealish didn't start. Doku didn't start. So there's no pace there. You know, um, K- KDB doesn't look a hundred percent fit right now. You know, I just feel like with the, the how good Arsenal are, and I class Arsenal as a world class side at the moment, one of the best in Europe. I know it's hard going away to Man City and getting a win because Liverpool didn't do it either, but I just feel like there was a massive chance there for Arsenal to assert themselves and go. Because, in my opinion, if Arsenal won yesterday, I think they win the Premier League. I'm going to say that right now. If Arsenal beat Man City yesterday, I think that momentum and the way they're playing and the momentum they're on just takes them to that Premier League trophy. Letting that slip and now be the two-point gap behind Liverpool, where Liverpool having to play Sheffield United, Man United away and Crystal Palace at home. So Sheffield United at home, Man United away and Crystal Palace at home in their next three games just gives us the advantage. And you could look back in that season again, and it's that City game. I don't know. I don't know. What do you we, guys in the chat? Let me know what you think. K Matt, what do you think? Um I felt I felt if, if Arsenal would have beat City, then it would have been a case of we'd have probably had to had to score more goals. We'd have to get that goal difference back. Because there's six goals ahead of us on goal difference. Um so it was good that they didn't score as well. Um, we do have to realise, though, that Arsenal do play really defensive. Like People seem to think that this Arsenal team are like, like you know, gung-ho, high line, attacking. They're not. They play three three centre-backs in their back in their back four. You know, Ben White's a centre-back. You know, Kivio's the, a Kivio's, Kivio's a centre-back, if we're honest. <laughs> Both teams. Uh, I think someone put Tommy Asu's earlier. a centre-back. I think someone put it up earlier. The Arsenal Man City game had eight centre backs and four defensive midfielders on the pitch. Exactly. You know, I was going to talk about the defensive midfielders because they just took more off. He brought more on in the second half. Yeah, they're full of they're full of DMs as well. You know, Odegaard doesn't doesn't get played as an attacking midfielder, which I think he, he is, if I'm honest. He gets played more as a box to box or an eight or even a DM sometimes. You know, they're not a huge attacking team. Um, they used to pace down the wings. And they just didn't really have that. You know, Man City were completely depleted. Like, they were. All their midfielders looked really leggy as well. Like, like, like Rodri and Kovacovic Kavak, looked like they were running in treacle. Like, and Kevin De Bruyne, it looks like he looked like he was pulling a caravan. Like, <laughs> you know... They were there for the taking. If 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 that had happened against us, I would be fuming that we didn't beat them. There there is a couple of things I'm going to say because I'm going to talk about it in a minute. I will say like Arsenal, and I'm not digging Arsenal out. I'm one of them people. I'm not going to dig Arsenal out. I keep saying I think Arsenal have been tremendous the last two seasons, one of the best teams in Europe right now. And I've seen some people in the comments um, might be an Arsenal fan saying in the comment that. You know, Arteta's taken it, wants to try and take this to the last day of the season. I get it. It's just a gamble because you had the momentum. Arteta is probably feeling like City are out of it now. In my opinion, City are out of it, right? So if you say City are out of it, Arteta might be looking at it thinking, now it's just a a straight shootout between myself and Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool. That's what it is now. And I'm looking at the fixtures and I think Liverpool will drop more points than us. So that draw against Man City, our hardest game left, is 
perfect result and we're going to go on and win the Premier League. And if that's the case, I'll take my hat off to Mikel Arteta and he got his system and his tactics perfectly correct. I just feel like that's a bit of a gamble. And the reason I say it's a bit of a gamble, this is Liverpool's last five seasons with the, la the last five seasons with nine games to go under Jurgen Klopp. I, I don't know if these... Uh, th these are completely correct. I've got this off Anfield Social. So if this is not completely correct, please someone go and check it and I can re-correct it. But in 18-19 season, last nine games, nine wins. 19-20 season, nine, last nine games, five wins. 2021-21 season, last nine game, seven wins. 21-22 seasons, last nine games, eight wins. 22-23 seasons, the last nine games, seven wins because we drew a couple at the end. But Liverpool finish strong at the end of seasons. Liverpool always finish strong. And was it a gamble by Arteta or was it a clever gamble by Arteta? That's the one. I'll give Arteta a bit of credit. Is he being a clever guy here? Because now City are three points behind Liverpool with a less goal difference. So City have got a gamble, Liverpool losing probably two games and their goal difference being better in Liverpool's to get above Liverpool in the league now. And they're two points behind Arsenal, if I'm correct, yeah? Or something like that. But City, one yeah. point. One point, 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 point behind Arsenal. So maybe, and, and Arsenal got a better goal difference, so you could probably count that as an extra point, yeah? Yeah. So Arteta might be looking at Get cleverly thinking, right? It's just a straight shootout between ourselves and Liverpool. Now, if he's if he's done that and Arsenal still win the Premier League, I will take my hat off to Mikel Arteta and I'll say, well done. If they don't, he might look back on that and go, City were there for the taking. We took a gamble and it didn't pay off. But that's football management, guys. That's football management. Uh, Big out Ganga Deep. He says, Trossard should have played Martinelli in instead of shooting with his left foot on the counter. That was their biggest chance. We attack, we attack City in both fixtures. Arsenal attack, counter attack, and Doku is shocking. Yeah, Doku is crap. I'm going to say that right now. It is crap. I, I don't understand this Jeremy Doku loving by people. I don't get it. He's shocking. He's absolutely shocking. I don't get it. All he does is run and look pleasing. He's got no end product. Shocking football. Mm. I never want to hear his name name again because all I'll think about is that bloody foul he did on McAllister. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah, what's all the breaking news you keep on writing in the chat? Is this is this April Fools? Breaking news according to Football Insider West Ham will Ivan work deal for Ivan Tony. I mean that I mean that makes that that sounds like a perfect a perfect fit for, for West Ham, doesn't it? To replace yeah. their other guy. Who scored a really good goal at the weekend, by the way. That game as well. Did anyone see that Newcastle um, Newcastle West Ham game? How on earth West Ham threw that away? That's bonkers. Yeah. Yeah, it's just They were they were three one up. Yeah, it's three mad, one up. Man. Nuts. Edwards got Arsenal winning the league by 90 points. That's 89 points and that's City 87 points. So Edwards sees Liverpool as an easier running than Arsenal, dropping more points. Edward, uh, and we'll have to chat about that, man. We'll have to chat about that. They did a, um, they, they did like a predictor on um, on Sky. Um, it was it was like using AI, I think. Liverpool have got like a 40% chance of winning the league. Arsenal's like... 28% and City's like 23. It's dropped. Yeah. It's dropped massively. It's dropped massively. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think any of the three teams are going to lose games, but I think both all three teams are going to drop points. Yeah, uh, I'd be like I a draw. A draw I, 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 there. Yeah, I don't think anyone's going to go perfect. Liverpool, for me, Liverpool, if Liverpool beat Man United away, and I know I'm saying this like Man United are great, they're not, but they're our arch rivals, yeah? And we haven't beaten them this season. If Liverpool beat Man United away, I think we win the title. That's where I think. If Liverpool beat Man United away on Sunday, because I think on Thursday we annihilate Sheffield United. It's, and then away, away on Sunday, if we beat Man United, I think we win the Premier League. Bears, 
Bez just wrote in the chat that uh, Raphael Vaughan and Lindelof are injured. Is that true? Did Brentford do a number on them? Because if, Ra if, if, if Ferran's injured, then that is a massive, massive plus. Because he's always been the guy that stopped us from winning. Always. Whenever we've not got results against them, it's because he's been playing. Yeah. Say what you want uh, about him, but he's he's a bloody lump that wins everything. <laughs> I, I I I just think I just think the Old Trafford game is the key for Liverpool. It's huge. I, I think if they beat Man United at Old Trafford, I think the Premier League trophy is in Liverpool's destination. He's done his hamstring. I he's think out. that's in Liverpool. Yeah, Varan. Yeah, Varan. Uh, so that means do, that that means who they're going to play? They're going to play what? Um, uh, <laughs> Who's that 37 year old that they've got at the back now? Um, Evans. Oh, who's that guy? Irish guy, yeah. So they're going to play yeah, Evans, Evans and Maguire. Yeah, probably. Is Martinez back? Yeah, Luke, Martinez is back. It'd be Martinez oh. and Maguire. Yeah. Okay, brilliant then, because Martinez is, is dogs. <laughs> hey, hey, it's a, it, like that. That's the game for me. It's the Liverpool Man United game. I feel like. If we if we beat them at Old Trafford, I think the total comes to Liverpool really do because that is our hardest away game. No matter what people think. I know people will talk about Aston Villa. I know we've got to go away to Aston Villa, away to West Ham and away to Everton, but look, Everton are Everton are shit. If Liverpool can't beat Everton away from home in a title <laughs> running, then I I know it's a Merseyside derby and Everton are gonna do everything in their power to play ten at the back. And not move for 90 minutes. We know what Everton are going to do. They're not going to try and attack Liverpool. That's not Sean Dyche's thing, yeah? He's going hey. to play the most terrorist football you've ever seen in your life. And it's <laughs> going to be annoying. And we're going to be sitting there 70 minutes in and it's nil-nil. And we're going to be like, oh, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. And then we're going to get the winner in the 89th minute, right? That's what's going to happen, right? And then the West Ham game. West Ham are a weird side. They've got very good players. Baketa and Kudis and... Bowen, they got quality players in that team, right? But you can get a result against West Ham, even with them quality players. You can go to West Ham and win three or four nil without even see trying. Bags. That you, you can, can do, you, you can win three or four nil without trying at times. And Aston yeah. Villa on the second to last day of the season, for me, we'll have they're Champions right. League. We'll have Champions League football sewn up because they're finishing in the top five. Because United are too far behind now. So Villa for me will have Champions League football sewn up. They'll be they finishing might, in the top five. So, they might even and, have the Conference League final. Yeah, so I don't think that'd be as hard as people give it credit for. So I I, I think, do you know, apart from the Man United game, I actually think Fulham away will be our hardest away game. Yeah, I do as well. I think Fulham that's away. our hardest away game. Apart from Man United, I think Man United's our hardest away game because who they are. But apart from that, I think Fulham away is our hardest away game. The, yeah. the reason why I think Fulham Fulham's going to be the hardest game is because they just they score loads of goals. They just score goals, and that that's the worry against us. You need to score three goals to beat Liverpool mm. in any game. You just need to score three goals. You're not going to get yeah. results against Liverpool if you don't score three, and there's not many teams that can do that. And um, Fulham are one of them. Tottenham are one of them as well, by the way. Yeah, Tottenham have got a lot of say in this. Which they is could see because... goals as well, though. Yeah, how, on Tottenham, earth, how on earth they won in that game? <laughs> like, Tottenham, Tottenham play Luton. everyone. Top, don't Tottenham and Brighton play everyone? Yeah. They, don't Tottenham and Brighton play everyone? Yeah. yeah. So, to, I think I think Man City and Arsenal... Will, no, Arsenal got to play Man, Brighton away. And I think... Man right, City Brighton got to play Man City and Arsenal back-to-back. -back. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's still got to play Tottenham. I think Tottenham only play... Tottenham play Man City and Arsenal at home, don't they? And play Liverpool away. Yeah. I know we're at home. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's games here, guys. It's so intriguing. It's going to go to the last day. I can't there's wait. A, there's, a Chelsea, there's a Chelsea game in there as well. With um, with Chelsea got to play. Got to play. Um, I think they've got to play City and Arsenal or maybe City or just Arsenal. But Chelsea have got yeah. to play a game as well. Don't rule them out. Yeah. yeah blo they blow hot and cold. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Black Dragon Ninja, big up to you for the super. I appreciate the love, my friend. He says, just remember, we have to do it for Jürgen. Jürgen is done it for us. We can't let Jürgen go without our helping hand. We owe Jürgen yeah. his Premier League. We can't miss Jürgen's legacy. 
big up to you, man. I agree. You're here. Let's do it for you. I agree. Let's do it for you. But we've got nine finals, man. We've got nine finals. I mean, City have got an FA Cup. And do you know what might help us a little bit more in this running is that we haven't got to play Champions League. Mm-hmm. Now, I know people are going to say the Thursday, Sunday thing. I think the Thursday, Sunday thing is a bit of a myth, if I'm perfectly honest. The only thing about a Thursday and Sunday thing is that sometimes you might have to play your game after your rivals have played, so you're playing catch-up. But for the amount of break you get between Thursday and Sunday, it's no different to a Wednesday and a Saturday. You know, it's a bit of a a a myth. We play Atalanta in our European game. Arsenal play Bayern Munich and Man City play Real Madrid. There's a massive difference here. You know, Atalanta are fifth in the Italian league and Bayern Munich are Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, Real Madrid, European royalty, both of them, City and Arsenal have got. So City and Arsenal have got to manage their way through massive Champions League games with Premier League games in between. Liverpool play Atalanta and then at Crystal Palace and at then home. Crystal at home and then Crystal Palace at home. At home. Yeah. So... Liverpool can beat Atalanta and Palace at home, you know. Put a little bit of a weakened team out against Atalanta, and not full strength, and then full strength against Palace. And then hopefully have the game wrapped up before we go away from home against Atalanta. Now, Atalanta are a team that like to press high, attacking-minded football. They're going to leave so many gaps that Liverpool can exploit. So our European games are a lot less tricky than... Man- Manchester City and Arsenal. So I think we could all agree with that. You know, but I, I'd rather play at Atlanta in Europe at home than playing a Real Madrid or a Bayern Munich. Even though Bayern Munich are not what they used to be, they're still European royalty at the end I, of the day. Bayern Munich are playing for one trophy now as well, by the way, because they're out of the league. Yeah, yeah, that's done now. Yeah, they're out of the league. So they're playing for the Champions League now. So they'll go gun go. And Arsenal have to play full strength. They, they have to. And yeah, let's be do. honest, Arsenal haven't really got a great bench, really. Like, it's not a huge amount of players that 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 it, I that I'd say are better than their Yeah. For me, Arsenal should beat but I'm gonna say it right now, I think Arsenal beat Bayern Munich over two legs and I think Real Madrid beat Real, uh, Man City. That's that's why I'm I actually think Arsenal beat Bayern Munich over two legs. And they play Real Madrid in the semi-final. So if you're going with that, if you look at the month of April as a whole, Arsenal, if they go through against Bayern Munich, will have to try and manipulate their way through these Premier League games, Bayern Munich games, and then possibly Real Madrid games. Where Liverpool will have a bit of probably of an easier, much easier European run. So that's why I say that the title is in Liverpool's hands. I don't mean this as any disrespect to Arsenal fans. Or Manchester City fans, but I think they'll all agree with me as well that the title is in Liverpool's hands. Uh, we have Southampton next. I believe Arsenal have Brighton away. Is it next? Yeah. So we've got Sheffield United. We got Sheffield United. Yeah, we got Sheffield United. I, I don't want should, Southampton. <laughs> no, we should be better than Sheffield United. <laughs> you know, we should beat. We should beat Sheffield United. We should beat Sheffield United, but quite a distance. Yeah, um, poor, poor team. That should help with our goal difference as well. I want to see four or five against Sheffield United. No excuses to me. No excuses to me. Um, it, it's just it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a difficult. Uh, at at the moment, it's in Liverpool's hands because Liverpool got a two point gap at the top of the league, and they have a easier European run than Arsenal or Man City do. If anyone disagrees with that, that's just mental for me. You know, if you had the choice to either play Atalanta, Bayern Munich or Real Madrid, you're picking Atalanta, yeah? Everyone is, right? So yeah. we have an easier European run, um, even and for the, the semi-finals. Yeah, the games after that, Benfica or um, Marseille, that's an easier... Yeah, because Arsenal could play Man well. City. Like, you could have Man City and Arsenal both win. they got to play each other in the semi-final. So then you've got yeah. two legs <laughs> against each other, plus the Premier Leagues. Where you can't, you know, you, 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 you got to go for it. So it's in, oh, it's, it's, I just feel like Liverpool got to try now. We got to beat Atalanta. 
You know, Liverpool don't beat Atalanta. Liverpool have to beat Atalanta. And then they have to go and beat Crystal Palace at home. But if if I ask, I mean, where is probably an Arsenal fan? If I gave this Arsenal fan a choice, Sheffield United at home, Man United away, and Atalanta at home, or your three fixtures, I'm sure you'd rather choose Liverpool's three fixtures coming up next. You know, because two of them are at home and one of them's away. And, you know, the away games, Man United at Old Trafford, but the home games against you know, Palace, Sheffield United and Atlanta, I'm sure... I'd take all them. You would pick take Liverpool's Any ones. day of the week. Yeah, you would pick Liverpool's Any ones. day of the week, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's what, let's see what we're doing for likes, guys. Let's see what we're doing for likes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I'm going to subscribe to KMAX channel as well. We've got 212 big likes. Up. Big up everyone in the chat. We've got over the 200 mark. Big up everyone. Before we end the video, I appreciate the love over here, guys, as well. And, guys, don't forget the uh, the the merchandise shop is open there as well. So, if you go and click on the uh, link on the YouTube my YouTube homepage, yeah, yeah, take you to my, cl uh, my merchandise store as well and Grab yourself some merch. Got to plug that, man. Got to plug that. Uh, and there's Absolutely. a deal in there at the moment as well. There's a deal in there at the moment as well. So go and check it out. But yeah, came out this this title race. It's gonna go down to the wire. It, it, it's, Love it. It, uh, it could go down. It could go down to the last game of the season between all three teams. Look, and I'm a confident Liverpool fan right now. I get had a go at for being confident, which I don't understand. You know, uh, uh, are you a Chelsea fan? Big up, man. Big up. Sorry, I thought you was an Arsenal fan. Big up. Uh, I just don't want Arsenal to win. <laughs> but I'd love to see Klopp win a Europa. You know, see where he's not. Big up, man. Appreciate that love, man. Appreciate that Big love. Up. Um, so Liverpool got players. Liverpool got players coming back. Uh, your Chocolates are coming back. Your Allisons, your Trent. Curtis Jones is back in training today. He will feature on Thursday. Liverpool got players coming back for the first time. Usually we're on our last legs now, but we're getting fresh legs back. The squad's only going to get better. Trent's coming back in the team. Allison, Jota, squad's getting better. It's getting stronger. I'm going to steal for Liverpool to win the Premier League, in my honest opinion. I'm going to keep going with it. What do you say, K Matt? Nine games to go, Europa League. What are we doing this season? How are we we win the lot. Off? We win the we lot. Win the lot. Eh? We win the lot. I, I actually I agree with I agree with um what's his name? Let me let me pick him up. Ashley Ross, Russell in the house. Um I I I believe we'll pull away. I believe we'll pull away. I I, I said this on um I said this on Savage's show, um that I think we'll win the league before the end of the season. It won't be the last game. It'll be second to last, third to last game. I'm hoping it's Tottenham at home. And we get a guard of honour <laughs> at Anfield. And then we get a couple of guard of honours. And then the Aston Villa game and the Wolves game don't matter. Yeah, it's just... Uh, do you know who I worry? I, just, I, 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 I just worry more about I just think those final Arsenal. five games, I just think those final five games, those three before the final two, are really hard for Arsenal and City. They're really tough games. Yeah, it's just yeah. I, I, I think with Arsenal, I actually fear Arsenal more than Man City. I'm going to say that right now. It's Arsenal who I fear. So, Arsenal, I'm bigging you up. It's you I fear. I think Man City are going to drop points more than the other two teams for the rest of the season. Uh, I don't know why. I just feel that in my bones. I can't, I, I can't say why. But Arsenal's the team I fear most because of their momentum. I don't feel Arsenal are going to drop many points. And... Liverpool, all Liverpool for me have got to do is match Arsenal's results and they win the Premier League. That's all Liverpool. I know it sounds easy on paper. That's all you got to do. But it's literally what Liverpool got to do. They just got to match Arsenal's results and they win the Premier League. And are Arsenal are a team to be feared. They are a team to be feared. I'll give them all the credit in the world, man. I'll give them all the credit. Oh, Gary Richards. Liverpool will win the league against Spurs. Go on. Go on, son. That's what I said. But yeah, I just, I just, I just I about. I, I, I genuinely, I genuinely thought that City would be the team to worry about again, and then they didn't beat, they didn't beat Arsenal. I thought they beat Arsenal. I thought they would. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, I thought Andy I, Taylor would give them something. <laughs> I, I, I look, look, I look at this. Look, City are three points behind us, and we got a better goal difference. So City need Liverpool to drop, to either lose a game or draw four matches for City to overtake us now. So we are we either need to lose a game of football, City need to win that game. But even if City win that game, they're level on points to us, but we've got a better goal difference. Mm-hmm. So City, Liverpool need to lose a game or draw four matches and then City win every single game this season. So City need to win all their next eight games in a row and hope Liverpool either lose one or draw four games. And then they still got to have a better goal difference at the end of the season. So I think it is more, you look at City as more of the outsider now and you look at Arsenal and Liverpool. You know, it could come down the goal difference. The whole, so that's, why, uh, that's why I'm saying Arsenal are the ones I fear. Uh, well, they can't win nine out of nine. But if they, no, if City win their next eight games, but Liverpool win their next eight games, Liverpool still win the league because they've got a better goal difference. You know, it, it, it's it, that goal. Our goal difference is plus five in front of cities. Now, City, I believe, got Luton at home where they could make that up. They probably beat Luton five nil, but Liverpool got Sheffield United. So Liverpool could still have that five goal difference above Manchester City. So Liverpool, so even if Liverpool lost a game, but then won their next seven in a row, and they'd still be level points in the better gut. So it, it, I think there's more for City to do than Arsenal. Let's put it that way. There's more for City to do than Arsenal. But I can't. It's hard to can't sit you out of it. What we need to do is we need to just keep on keep on doing what we're doing, and what we're doing is is absolutely sensational. You know, yeah. battering teams with like thirty goals, sorry, thirty shots on goal. Just keep mm. on doing that. It, it'll come. It'll come. Yeah, I just feel like the thing with it'll City, come. City, City. Yes, this is a chat. Here. City have zero margin for What's errors on? now. That is Spot correct. On. If City, if City. So if City draw their next Premier League game, but Liverpool win, then it's even think, harder, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. So it they is... can't drop any more points, City. They can't drop any more points. Liverpool can afford to draw a game where City can't. Let's put it that yeah. way. Let's put it that way. But guys, uh, it's going to be an amazing end of the season. Premier League football is back now. It's going all the way through. We got so much to talk about for the weeks to come. Uh, guys, I'll be back sometime this week. Obviously, we've got the Sheffield United game on Thursday that we've got to chat about. You know, it's almost bloody Tuesday now. The weeks are flying already. Is it um, Wednesday? Is it Wednesday, Sheffield United? Uh, Thursday. We play Thursday. Yeah, we play okay. Thursday. Thursday. Um, so, yeah, loads to talk about. Um, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hitting that notification bell when you know we're live. Don't forget to go and subscribe to KMAX channel as well, KMAX in YouTube. Go and subscribe to our man over there. Yep. I appreciate all the love today, guys. We had loads of people in the house, over 300 at one time. We've smashed over 200 likes live. Thank you for there all you the go. new subscribers. I really, really do appreciate it. Guys, don't forget to share, subscribe, and like the video when this is finished. Get the channel moving up towards 6K. I appreciate it, love, guys. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye for now. Enjoy the rest of your bank holiday Monday. Up Bye-bye. the Reds.